After having sailed for the past eight years with our kids, raising them, homeschooling them, and managing to circumnavigate the globe one and a half times with them, we are now alone, on a boat, wondering what to do with ourselves. But the good thing is, two of our kids, and a girlfriend and her parents, will be joining us in the coming weeks. But for now, I hope you'll join us today as we put up the sails and explore the beautiful islands of the Southern Caribbean on our catamaran. Okay, so you know how I said Keith likes to do things at the last minute. We talked this morning, it's like 7 a.m. right now, we talked about let's go to Tobago Keys in a day or two. There's a lot more boats here than we had anticipated. And so five minutes later, he's taking the shade down, he's putting the sails up. I barely have time to get the camera out. Are you going to deflate those? No. Just leave them up. Where's the dinghy? One just left, and there's another one over there. So that's that was two monoholes, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight monoholes, and one, two, three, four catamarans. And it's windy, so we won't be doing much paddle boarding because I don't got the strength to paddle board and wind like this. I mean, it's not super windy, but for perspective, we've had this anchorage mostly all to ourselves for the past week or two, and it's been amazing. As new empty nesters, we really enjoy our privacy. by Anchorage with way too many people. Keith can't run around naked with all you guys here. Although I doubt we'll be the only boat at Tobago Keys, but it'll be something new. Right, adventure, adventure awaits. Okay, now I got my camera on. I can be hands free. Take a piece of bacon. Go help him put sails up. All right. Okay, I can't tell. It looks like it's between. Look be at the back here. Look between. at the back of the sail. Oh, okay, right here. I got you. Okay. Now straighten it out. Straighten it out. Like that. Just stay right there. Okay. Here is St. Vincent. So I think over here is still Grenada, um, maybe this is St. Vincent now, I don't know for sure. Bunch of little islands out here. You can uh, go about two more degrees on the autopilot. Okay. So is this it? This is Tobago Keys? Wow. 
Wow, beautiful water. A sailboat tucked back away in that little cove. Kind of neat looking. Private spot. Looks shallow. Oh, there's a couple of boats there. Not private. Oh, heck no. Scratch that. So we've had quite a bit of rain the last few days. We did move anchorages. We are now here at Union Island in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. And this is a place that had serious damage from Hurricane Barrel. And we're gonna go over here and uh, take a closer look at some of it. But, and this is from the hurricane back in July of this year, which uh, Grenada and, and this part of the world hadn't seen a hurricane in about 20 years, I think. This is Union Island, with a surface area of only three and a half square miles, it's home to about 3,000 people. Hurricane Barrel made landfall here in the Eastern Caribbean on July 1, 2024, and was the earliest ever recorded hurricane in the North Atlantic. Damages and casualties were widespread. Barrel caused catastrophic damage on Grenada's northern islands of Kiriakou and Petite Martinique, and on several of St. Vincent and the Grenadines' southern islands, such as this one, Union Island. Homes and businesses were destroyed, boats were washed ashore, and many lives were lost. People were left without shelter, food, water. Humanitarian efforts began as soon as the storm passed, and the people banded together to begin rebuilding their communities. Even though your life has probably moved on since July, the people here are still trying to rebuild and could use your help. Check out the link on the screen or in the video description and consider sending a few dollars to their GoFundMe. Okay. So I'm reading comments on uh, Glory's story's latest video, and we've gotten some emails to to as well. For those of you who know Glory, she's out there doing van life, and reading some of the comments, and they are, and we got and some, and some emails. Uh, a lot of you guys are a little chapped at Luke and Glory when they hit the elk up there when Glory hit the elk, and uh, I just wanted to unpack a few of those things for you. If you didn't already know, Glory is a super close family friend who's borrowing our Ford excursion to live life on the road with our son Finn and some other close friends, all while sharing her adventures weekly on her YouTube channel, Glory Stories. Recently, she had a slightly controversial episode. Guys, oh, I just hit a deer, too, actually. Oh, I'm taking a little bit, actually. Oh, I definitely killed one, and one of them is still alive. Whoa. Oh, that's bad. Ah, uh, the front mirror is yacked right here. I, I told all those kids, don't be driving at night in the mountains if you don't have to. I mean, if you have to, fine. And be, keep, keep your head on a swivel. But if you don't have to, drive during the day. And uh, they decided that they were going to leave at night and uh, leave it in the evening, and then it got dark. And then the next thing you know, the very reason I told them not to drive at night is because elk jump out in the middle of you or deer, and you take a chance of damaging yourself or your car. Oh, yeah, and the animals. So, uh, this is what happened. She, she the elk, three elk jumped out in front of her and she hit them. And uh, thankfully, she didn't wreck or, or get killed or hurt, hurt herself. And then, uh, what really pissed me off, and I know this pissed a lot of you guys off, I got a call the next day saying, hey, we, we wrecked your car, we, we did this, we did that. And then I saw the video footage of the elk that you saw in Glory's video, and I was pissed off. I was madder than a whippersnapper. And I was mad because they left a live elk up there, a wounded animal on the side of the road. But the next morning I called him, I said, well, obviously you put that animal down, Luke. No, 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 I think it was gonna be all right. Long story short, I got mad, I chewed their butts out. I was so pissed off leaving that wounded elk there on the side of the road. And then I said, well, the good thing, guys, is at least you called law enforcement to tell them there was a wounded animal up there the next day, or once you got cell service, you did call somebody. No, no, we didn't call anybody. We didn't call nobody, and that really pissed me off. So I called the local sheriff up there the next morning, and 
and told them about it. And uh, I don't know whether they were founded or not, but that's what happened. They're good kids. Glory's a good woman. Luke's a good guy. And, and uh, But I wanted to answer some of those things. Yeah, I was pissed off. I wasn't so much pissed off about the damage to my excursion. I was more pissed off about the lighthearted attitude and the nonchalant, not taking things seriously. Give them a second shot. If you dis if you, if you unsubscribed, the only way we're going to make this new generation of kids better is, is to support them and show them what it's like to be uh, responsible and to be an adult. Okay, so we have been at, uh, now that rant's over, we have been at Union Island for 10 days. We went up to Tobago Keys. The acreage was rough there and it, it was okay. Everything was dead. The corals were dead. Everything's dead up there. I, I didn't like it. It was beautiful from just an uh, optic standpoint. It was very beautiful, but uh, we wanted a smaller anchorage. We're in the non-windy season here, so there's not a lot of wind right now. We've been anchored in this really secluded spot. Nobody around. I'm naked all the time. Renee's naked all the time. It's been a wonderful time. <laughs> there's been no filming of that. Just there's been no filming <laughs> of the, the, the nakedness of this <laughs> filthy body. I've been working out every day, guys. Yes. I've been eating right, working out. i got to weigh in Monday. It's coming. You get the full body shot again. You know the rotation, Woo showing the showing the spill stuff. Oh, he's uh, super tan now. Super tan. I tan the fat just to make it look a little better. And um, so we're gonna move today over to I don't know some other little island, and then we're gonna work our way back down to uh, uh, Saint George. Saint George in Grenada, and we are going to next week. We are uh, headed off to uh, I don't know when you're watching this, but. Uh, we're heading to Annapolis Boat Show eventually, and uh, just to get off the boat for a few days, and then we'll be back. And then we've got lots of visitors coming, and our children are coming home, and I'm getting so excited. I don't know if I'm going to cry. Anyway, that's what we got going. So stay tuned. It's going to get more exciting as the days go by. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. We went paddle boarding every day, sometimes twice a day. It was nice and calm out here. And the water was clear. You could see all the way to the bottom. It's really cool. Our Hobie paddle boards are freaking awesome. Keith had a he had a hard time getting balanced on it. He's not he's not uh, an avid paddle boarder. He wasn't, but now he's really really good. Keith and I have been in Grenada since August 3rd, since our insurance requires us to be down here during hurricane season, which ends in November. And sitting right between Grenada and St. Vincent and the Grenadines are a half dozen islands that we've been exploring over the past few weeks. We've gone from Union Island for a few days, to Petite Martinique, back down south to Kiriakou for a bit, and finally back to mainland Grenada to get ready to leave for the Annapolis Boat Show and prep for our guests to arrive shortly after that. Put out code zero. Okay. Code zero.
the other way. Okay. Okay, well, the wind died, so we dropped the sails, and we're going to go ahead and put the shade out so that it can be up by the time we get to the anchorage, because it is so hot out here. A lot of you have asked about my goofy-looking hat, which I absolutely love. It is on our website, sailingzatar.com, uh, shop, forward slash shop, I think. And it's, uh, I just got it on Amazon. There's an Amazon link there, but I like it because it provides coverage for my neck and my big wide brim you know I'm, I'll be 51 in a few days and uh, the Sun does not do kindly to my skin as I've been aging so I try to protect it as much as possible had this shade made back in Fiji several years ago. It was custom made and it is literally a game changer. We always sit out on deck as our favorite part of the boat to come out and sit on deck in our hanging chairs and on our um, sunbeds. Love this spot. It's like our own little backyard. some sand. Okay guys, that's the end of this episode. We are going to spend a few days here uh, getting ready to go to the Annapolis Boat Show. We'll leave the boat here in Grenada for a few days while we fly over to Maryland. And I'm going to go see Washington, D.C., which I've never seen before. I'm super excited. And then when we come back, we're going to get ready for our guests to come out on board. Jack and Kate, our 21-year-old son, almost 22. Kate is 17. And Jack's girlfriend will be joining us and her parents. And it's going to be a big party. It's going to be so much fun. So I hope you'll come back and uh, tune in for the next few weeks. we got some good stuff going on. But uh, anyway, I hope you have a great weekend, a great week. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye.